Hi, this is S. Lakshman Ajari, working as Assistant Professor in Department of Cyber Security, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the data representation in computer organization and architecture. So, in this lecture, we are going to discuss the introduction to the data representation, followed by the types of different number systems and uh, number system conver conversions. So, we can convert uh, one number system to the another number system. So, all those we can discuss here, number system conversions and then uh, representation of a, a number. So, we can represent the number in two ways. One is a fixed point representation and another one is a floating point representation. So, in this lecture, we are going to uh, discuss all these uh, content. Okay. So, First of all, the data representation. So, what is uh, data? So, data is uh, a collection of uh, collection of the uh, positive and the negative values that conveys the uh, information. Okay. So, the data representation it, uh, it uh, refers to the manner in which the data is stored in the computer. So, the data representation is it is the manner in which uh, uh, the data is stored in the computer. So, how the data is stored in the computer? So, uh, that is uh, called data representation. So, because uh, so the computer uh, using the computer, we are performing several applications. So, inside the computer, we have a, a CPU. So, inside that CPU, we have a ALU, automatic and logical unit. So, that automatic and logical unit. It uh, performs various automatic and logical operations like uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and logical operations are and or x or not. So these are all the various operations that are performed. Okay. So uh, we are performing all these operations on the binary data, the binary data because the computer can understand only the uh, binary language. That is nothing but machine language. So that is nothing but zeros and once, but uh, we are giving the inputs as uh, in uh, human understandable language. That means uh, we are using a decimal number system. So we are giving that uh, decimal number system to the computer. Then the computer will convert uh, that input decimal numbers into the, the corresponding uh, binary number. Then it will process. Again, the results will be generated in the form of uh, a binary. Again, that binary information will be converted into the decimal and then it will be, the results will be given to the user. So in this way, the computer will process the data. Okay. So the binary information in digital computer is stored in. So already we have seen. So the computer, it can process only the binary data. So this binary data, it is stored in uh, two ways. One is uh, the binary information we can store in processor registers or the memory. So, what is processor registers? So, register is nothing but a group of flip flops. So, flip flop is nothing but it is a single bit memory storage device. So, that means uh, using one flip flop, we can store either one bit of information. Either we can store zero or either we can uh, we can store either zero or one. Okay. So, uh, you by combining different uh, by combining a, a group of uh, a group of flip flops, then it will be considered as a a register. So, using that register, we can store some information and we have different types of uh, registers uh, based on the size, 8-bit register, 16-bit register, 32-bit register, so and so on. And coming to the memory. So, memory also we are using, uh, we, we are using to store some information. But uh, when you compare these registers on memory, the register size is, it is limited because uh, uh, we have only limited number of registers available inside the processor. So that's why we can store a limited amount of information. But whereas memory, so memory is a, it is available in a, a more size. Okay. So that we can, uh, uh, we can store a large amount of information. And uh, so the registers, uh, it contains two types of information. One is the data and another one is the control information. So these two types of uh, uh, information we can store in the registers. So, what are the data? So, data are the numbers. So, data it includes the numbers and other 
binary coded information so that are operated on to achieve required computational results and coming to the control information so control information is a bit or a group of bits so sometimes we are using a single bit as a control information uh, and uh, uh, in some other times we can use a group of bits so a group of bits that are used to control something operation so that are called the control information so uh, this control information is used to specify the sequence of command signals needed for manipulation of the data in other registers so using this uh, control information we can manipulate uh, the data in computer uh, in uh, computer other re registers so how do the computer represents the data okay so the most computers are uh, digital okay so most computers are digital and uh, so it can recognize only the two discrete states so it the computer it can recognize only two states that are uh, either on or off okay so on it will be represented with a, a logic one and off it will be represented with a, a logic zero zero so uh, in order to represent any information uh, the computer will uh, use these two states so using these two states it will represent the information and it will use a binary system to recognize two states so it will use a, a binary system so inside the computer we are using a binary system so binary system means it consists of two set of values one is uh, the logic high and another one is a uh, logic zero and uh, it use it use a number system with the two unique digits so zero and one so called bits so the bits is it is a short form of the uh, binary digits so in binary digits we are taking the first two letters and in digits we are taking the last two digits so by combining these two it will it can call bits so bits okay so the smallest unit of data the computer can process so data is the it is the smallest unit of data the computer can process okay so here you can see binary digit so it is one state and it is another state so this is a state 1 and this is a state 2 so in the form of electric charge so that means here uh, the bulb is on so it represents logic 1 here it is off so it will be represented with a logic 0 and the electronic state so it is on and it is a off so using this uh, two states we can represent the binary data and coming to the number systems so what is a number system so a number system is uh, simply a system to represent or express the numbers so using this uh, number system we are uh, going to represent or express the numbers so the language we use to communicate with each other is comprised of characters and words so we are uh, we are speaking uh, that means we are communicating so the communication with others is comprised so suppose when we are communicating with any other person then the communication it includes the characters and the words so because we understand the numbers we can understand numbers characters words so all we can understand so that we are communicating with the the other person so but here the computer cannot understand all these uh, numbers words and uh, the characters so the computer can understand only the binary language so that's why so this type of data is not suitable for computers so computers only understand the numbers so it can understand only the binary language so that's why we need to represent the numbers uh, using this number system so when we enter the data so how the computer can understand the data so suppose if we enter any data if we enter any data then that data is converted into the electronic pulse first so suppose if you type any character in the keyboard then the data will be converted into the electronic pulse after that that electronic pulse is identified as a code 
each uh, each electronic pulse it will be identified as uh, a code then that code is converted into the numeric format by the ascii okay so in this way uh, in this way the entered data by the user will be converted into the corresponding ascii code so that the computer can understand it. so ascii so ascii means american standard code for information interchange so okay uh, okay so this is a uh, this is a standard uh, to represent the numbers uh, characters and words so that the computer can understand them so it gives each number character symbol a numeric value so that means uh, using this ascii uh, ascii values we can represent all the numbers characters and uh, symbols so that a numeric value will be generated by the ascii value so that the computer can understand that so to understand the language of computer one must be familiar with the number system so here we have given a list of ascii values so total the ascii values are uh, divided into three categories one is the ascii control character characters second one is a ascii printable character and the extended ascii characters okay so this ascii is a, it is a uh, it is used to represent uh, represent using a 7 bit 7 bits so 7 bits so that means so 2 power 7 okay 2 power 7 okay so that means so 127 127 so that means so total we can represent 127 ascii values but here we are starting with zero so that 0 to 127 so we can represent these ascii values so here you can see so here you can see so zero so ascii control characters so if zero zero is there it represents null null character if zero one is there start of sh that means start of head so like that every ascii code it is having that particular uh, meaning there. okay so these are so up to here so from here zero zero to 126 so total 127 ascii values okay so in addition to that some extended ascii characters also there extended okay so in order to represent the extended ascii character we are using a 8 bit so 2 power 8 2 power 8 so that means so 256 so 256 that means so 0 to 255 so 0 to 127 already it is covered in the ascii control characters and ascii printable characters so that means the remaining 128 to 255 so these are the extended ascii characters so from here here to here okay on coming to the number system so the number system is simply a system to represent or express the numbers okay so there are various types of number systems and the most commonly used ones are so these are the most commonly used number systems so mainly we have four types one that are binary number system octal number system decimal number system and hexadecimal number system so these are th these are the four main classification of the number system so so what is binary number system so in binary number system we use it to represent only two values one is either 0 or 1 and similarly in octal number system Uh, we are representing the numbers from 0 to 7 so 0 to 7 so that means total it contains 8 uh, values so 0 to 7 and decimal number system so these are the numbers from 0 to 9 so 0 to 9 uh, numbers are called the decimal numbers and coming to the hexadecimal number system so the hexadecimal number systems are from 0 to 9 then a to f okay so these are the number system so so see binary number system so the binary number system uh, its a base is a 2 so it is also called base 2 number system so the base 2 number system is also known as the binary number system so here we are using only the two digits that exists there are 0 and 1 okay so specifically the usual base 2 is a radix of 
the figure described under this system are known as the binary numbers which are the combinations of 0 and 1 so suppose if you consider a example 110101 one, so it is a binary number so this is a binary number suppose if you have a decimal number then that decimal number can be converted into the binary so suppose if you have a decimal number 14 so then we can convert that number into the binary so by dividing the number by 2 so 2 7 zero, 14 so remainder is the 0 uh, remainder is 0 so 2 3 zero, 6 so remainder is a 1 2 1 zero, 2 so remainder is a 1 so we have to take the, in this order okay so that means 1 1 1 0 so this is a binary equivalent so this is a binary equivalent number of 14 in decimal number so this is a binary number next to come into the octal number system so this octal number system we can also call the base 8 number system so using this octal number system we can represent the numbers from 0 to 7 so 0 to 7 okay so consider a, a octal number system so 215 uh, base 8 it is into the decimal number so we are converting the octal number to the decimal number so see here so we have to write uh, the powers so here uh, for the 5 the weightage is a 8 power 0 here for 1 8 power 1 2 8 power 2 so that means 2 into 8 power 2 plus 1 into 8 power 1 plus 5 into 8 power 0 so if you combine all the values if you add that values then you will get the corresponding number in decimal so that here in this case 141 141 is the it is a decimal number which is corresponding to the 215 in octal number system so in this way we can convert so coming to the decimal number system so this decimal number system you can also call the base 10 number system so the the base num uh, decimal number system uh, using this num the decimal number system we use it to represent the numbers from 0 to 9 so in the decimal number system position successive to the left of the decimal point represents the units tens hundreds and thousands and so on okay so example of the decimal number system is a uh, consider the decimal number system 1457 so 1457 is a it is a decimal number system okay so how we can write this so the weightage of the 7 is so 7 is a it is a units place that means 10 power 0 10 power 0 next 5 weightage is a it is in the position of 10 sir 10 power 1 4 10 power 2 1 10 power 3 so if you multiply 1 into 10 power 3 plus 4 into 10 power 2 plus 5 into 10 power 1 plus 7 into 10 power 0 okay so 1 into 10 power 3 so that is equal to 1000 4 into 10 square 400 so like that we have to add all the numbers so that is equal to 1457 so this is a decimal number system coming to the hexadecimal number system so this is called uh, base 16 number system okay so using this number hexadecimal number system we can represent the numbers from 0 to 9 0 to 9 and a to f so a corresponding to the 10 in decimal number system so here we are not representing 10 directly okay so 10 means here a a is corresponding to the 10 in decimal number system similarly b c d e f okay so that means total uh, we have f 16 16 uh, 16 values okay and coming to the number system conversions so till now we have seen the different number systems so using this number systems we convert from one number system to the another number system so here we will have a glance on uh, conversion among the bases the possibilities so uh, how we can convert for, uh, from one number system to the another number system 
So this is a decimal number system. So from the decimal number system too, we can convert to, to the octal number system and we can also convert to the binary. We can also convert to the hexadecimal. Okay, so like this, uh, we can convert one number system to the another number system. So let's see some examples on that. So decimal to binary number. So decimal to binary number system conversion. So we have a, a, a decimal number. So what is the decimal number? 125. So this 125, we are converting into the binary. So what we have to do? We have to do the, we have to divide the number with the 2. So okay. 2, 2, 62 is there. So 124. So remainder is the 1 now. Next, we are dividing with the 2 again. So 231 is there. So remainder is the 0. Next, 215 is there. So remainder is the 1. Next, 27 is there. Remainder is the 1. Next, 23 is there. Remainder is 1. Next, 2. 1 jar. Remainder is 1 now. Okay, so we have to take in this order. So, see here. So, this is a binary equivalent, which is corresponding to the 125 in decimal number system. So, this is a conversion of the decimal number system to the binary number system. And coming to the decimal to octal conversion. So, decimal to octal. So, in order to convert the number from the decimal to the octal, then we have to divide the number with the 8. Okay. So, if you divide, the, so 8 into 154. Okay. So, uh, it will give 1232. So, remainder is the 2. If you divide again with 8, so 8, 19, jar, so you will get a 152. So, you will get the remainder as 2. Next, 8, 2, jar. 16. So, remainder is a 3. Okay. So, we have to take in this order. Okay. So, see here. So, this is a uh, equivalent uh, octal number system. Next, come to the octal to binary conversion. So, we have a, a octal number, then it will be converted into the binary. So, technique is a uh, convert each octal digit to a, a 3-bit equivalent a binary representation. So, already we have seen, so 5. So, 5, how we can represent in binary? So, that means 1, 0, 1. Similarly, 0, we can represent 0, 0, 0. So, that means every digit in octal number system is represented with a 3-bit a binary number system. So, see here. So, 5 is represented with 101, 0 is represented with 000, and 7 is represented with 11. So, in this way, we can convert the given octal number to the binary. So, this is a equivalent binary number. Coming to the hexadecimal to binary conversion. So, the technique is convert each hexadecimal digit into a 4-bit binary equivalent a binary number binary representation. So we have a, a hexadecimal number system. So one zero a f. So here every digit of the hexadecimal number are represented using a four bit binary number. So f. So how we can represent f? So f means all ones four ones. A a means uh, uh, its corresponding value in decimal is a ten. So that means one zero one zero. So, 0, that means uh, 4 zeros, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, this is a, a corresponding binary number. So, in this way, we can convert from one number system to the another. Coming to the binary to octal. So, technique is group bits in a 3 starting on right and convert to octal digits. Okay. So, here, in order to convert from binary number to the octal, so we have to group uh, three three bits. Then we we have to convert the that uh, binary to the octal. So see here. So from the right side. So from the right side we have to take three three uh, bits. So this is uh, this is one three bits. Next three bits. 
next three bits and the remainder is remaining is only one left so this is a triple one so that means we are represented with seven zero one zero so that means two zero triple one that means three here only one is there so one three two seven so it is a octal equivalent number for the binary number next to binary to hexadecimal conversion so technique is uh, group bits in fours starting on right so binary to hexadecimal so here in this case uh, we have to uh, we have to take a, a group of four bits so four bits four bits and remaining bits so 1011 so that is equal to b 1011 that is equal to b 102 so that means 2 bb so 2 bb is the uh, equivalent hexadecimal number and going to the number representation okay so in number system in number system so the number including the zero it will be consider as a, a unsigned number whereas in order to represent the negative numbers we have a uh, we have a um, in order to represent uh, uh, the negative numbers we have a um, okay so in order to represent the negative numbers we have a, a notation we have a notation so in ordinary arithmetic the positive numbers are, are represented with a, a plus sign and the negative numbers are represented with a minus sign but uh, whereas in this uh, number uh, system so the positive numbers are represented with uh, the logic zero and uh, the negative numbers are represented with the logic one so in addition to the sign so in addition to the sign the number may have a binary pointer so the binary uh, the number may have a, a binary pointer so this we can also call a decimal pointer so the position of the binary point is needed to represent uh, the fractions integers or the mixed integer fraction numbers so using that uh, binary point or decimal point we can represent the numbers as a integers fractions or the mixed integer fractions okay so to representation of the binary point in the register is complicated by the fact is uh, it is characterized by the position in the register okay so there are two ways to specify the position of the binary point in a register so that are the first way is the fixed point representation and the second one is the floating point representation so using this uh, two ways we can represent the uh, we can represent the position of the binary point in a, a register so first one is a fixed point representation so in fixed point method assumes that the binary point is always fixed in one position so it is here the binary point is fixed always so the two positions most widely used are the first one is the the binary point in the extreme left of the register extreme left so that it will be the number will be considered as a fraction so for if the binary point is at the extreme right extreme right then uh, right right of the register to make the store number integer okay so see here integer representation so when an when an integer binary number is positive the sign is represented with positive okay so integers so uh, in general we use to represent the integers so positive number negative number so positive numbers are represented with a, a zero and the negative numbers are represented with the one negative numbers are represented with the one so and the magnitude by the positive number uh, positive binary number okay so when the number is negative sign is represented by one but the rest of the number may be represented in one of the three possible ways so suppose if you have a positive number so positive number so positive number sign will be uh, zero and uh, the remaining so every number it is having two uh, two parts one is the sign and the remaining is the magnitude so for positive numbers the sign is zero 
and the remaining magnitude is represented with the positive binary number positive binary number whereas when we are representing the negative number so the negative number the sign is the negative the sign is 1 the sign is the 1 because it is a negative number and uh, the magnitude so this is a magnitude so this magnitude we can represent in one of the three cases the first case is a signed magnitude representation signed ones complement representation and signed twos complement representation so this the magnitude of the negative number it can be represented in any one of these three so let's see first one mag uh, signed magnitude representation so the signed magnitude representation of a, a negative number it consists of magnitude and uh, the negative sign the leftmost bit in the binary number it represents the sign of the number it represents the sign of the number so here you can see so the decimal range for unsigned 8 bit number binary number is uh, 0 to 255 so decimal range for unsigned unsigned means only we are having the positive values that means uh, 0 to 255 so these are the unsigned numbers so for if you want to represent the signed numbers then it will be minus 127 to plus 127 so these are the range so see here so sign bit so sign bit so positive positive number is represented with 0 and eight number are represented with 1 suppose here we have a example 45 so this is a positive this is a positive number so so that the magnitude uh, so that the sign will be zero this is a sign and the magnitude so 45 equal and magnitude is a 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 so this is a magnitude similarly it is a -45 so negative number so the sign of the negative number is a 1 so that the sign will be 1 and the remaining magnitude will be 0 1 0 1 1 0 because their magnitudes are same but only the difference is a sign coming to the signed ones complement representation so for n bits representation n bit re register the smallest negative number that can be stored is a minus 2 power n minus 1 minus 1 and the largest positive number that can be stored is uh, plus 2 power n minus 1 minus 1 okay okay so see here so in the signed ones complement representation so suppose if you have a plus 6 so how we can represent plus 6 so plus 6 so it is a positive number so the sign will be 0 and magnitude will be 0 1 1 0 okay so this is a positive number so coming to the negative number minus 6 so minus 6 see using ones complement uh, ones complement uh, representation so minus sign minus so first we have to represent in a positive equivalent value so positive equivalent value is a 0 0 1 1 0 so it is a sign okay so we have to complement we have to complement so Uh, this is equal to plus six, so we are going to represent minus six. So my, for minus uh, for negative numbers, the sign will be one, and uh, in ones complement, the magnitude will be. We are performing ones complement. So if you perform ones complement, one zero zero one. So this is a equal to minus six value. Coming to the sign twos complement representation. Okay, so. See, the positive numbers are simply represented as a simple binary representation. But if the number is negative, then it is represented using the two uh, using two's complement. So the magnitude we can represent either in sign magnitude or sign one's complement or in sign two's complement representation. So example, so we are using five bit registers, five bit register. The representation of minus five and the plus five. Okay, so see here. So this is a representation of the plus five. So plus five. So plus positive number. Sign is zero, and the magnitude zero one zero one. So how we can represent in uh, using sign to two complement 
first we have to perform one's complement so one's complement so minus 5 so that means one sin bit and uh, we are i am complementing the magnitude 1 0 1 0 so to the one's complemented number we have to add one because in order to get the two's complement so that this will become one so this is a equivalent number so 1 1 0 1 1 so this one so the range of numbers will be uh, the post largest to post to number can be stored in 2 power k minus 1 minus 1 uh, whereas the negative lowest number is a minus 2 power k minus 1 so the drawback with the signed ones complement representation is a uh, here we have uh, two types of zeros one is uh, the minus zero and another one is a uh, plus zero so this will be become a uh, ambiguous so okay so in order to avoid that we are going for the sign two's complement so in sign two's complement we have only the post to zero so that uh, the ambiguous uh, we have we are eliminating by using the sign two's complement representation and coming to the floating point representation so binary numbers can also be expressed in exponential form so the representation of the binary registers in exponential form is known as a floating point representation so the floating point representation divides the number into two parts one is uh, the left side is uh, assigned <coughs> the left side is a signed fixed point integer known as mantissa on the right side is the exponent so any floating point number we can represent using the two terms one is a mantissa and another one is a exponent so in the form of a into 10 power small a so where capital a is the it is a mantissa and where uh, small a is a it is a exponent okay so using the using the two uh, parts we can represent the floating point number so floating point representation can also have a sign so zero denoting a positive value one denoting a negative value so this floating point uh, representation uh, okay so the iterably it has developed the floating point representation standard so here we have two types of floating point representations one is a single precision so that means 32 bit and another one is a double precision that means a 64 bit so using these two types we can represent the floating point numbers so in the first case single precision floating point representation so the single precision floating point representation also known as fp32 that means floating point 32 or float 32 so either way we can call uh, is a, a computer number format that uses a floating radix point to express a wide dynamic range of numeric values okay so this iterable 754 standard it defines that that binary 32 is having the following characteristics so entire that uh, uh, in that 32 bits so one bit is for signed 8 bits is for exponent and remaining 23 bits is for in order to represent the mantissa okay so you can see the structure of the single precision floating point representation okay so here total it is having 32 bits out of the 32 the most significant bit will be used to represent the sign okay sign whether it is a positive number or negative number like that and uh, 8 bits are used to represent the exponent and the 23 bits are used to represent the mantissa so this mantissa it may be a, a integer value or floating value coming to the second type of the floating point representation that is a double precision floating point representation so the double precision floating point representation also known as fp64 or float 64 so either way we can call is a computer number format that uses floating point radix to the express a wide dynamic range of the numeric values so this uh, if you look into the structure of the double precision floating point representation so total it is having 64 bits out of the 64 bits the most significant bit is used to represent the sign 
one vector. So, si uh, in order to represent the sign, we are using only a single vector. And uh, as an exponent, 11 bits we are using. And as a mantissa, so 52 bits. 52 bits we are using. So, in this way, we are representing the floating point number. Representing the bits. Representing the bits and bytes. So, bit. So, bits and bytes are the can be represented in the following ways bits and bytes. So, in the field of digital communication or computers, bits are the most basic unit of the information or the smallest unit of data. Okay. So, bits means either uh, we can use, uh, so the bits it can be represented with uh, either 0 or 1, or it can be a minus or plus, it can be false or true, or off or on, yes or no. So, in this way, the two states we can be represented. Okay. So, here, see, so these are the uh, binary information group representations on the terms. Okay. So, based on the number of bits, we have different uh, uh, terms. Suppose if only single bit is there, then that can be considered as a, a bit, bit or digit or flag. A group of four bits, that is called nibble, that is called nibble or nibble. A group of eight bits is called uh, one byte, one byte of information or octet or character. We can also call a group of eight bits is called character. And 16, that means one word or double word. 32 bits, we can call double word or long word. 64 bits, very long word. So, in this way, we can uh, uh, we can group with the bits. So, to quantify the digital data, we have many options uh, like uh, kilo, mega, giga, tera and many more similar terms. Okay. So, already we have seen what is bit. So, bit is a, a, single, uh, a single digit. So, one binary digit. Byte, a group of 8 bits. Kilo bit, so 1024 bits, or we can also represent 2 power 10. So, 2 power 10 bits, that is called 1 kilo bit. 1 kilo byte, so that means 1024 bytes, or 2 power 10 bytes. Next to megabyte, megabyte, so 2 power 20 bytes. Gigabyte, 2 power 30 bytes. Terabyte. So, 2 power 40, petabyte, 2 power 50 bytes, exabyte, 2 power 60 bytes. So, in this way, we can represent uh, the quantity of the digital data. Okay. So, in this picture, we have seen uh, the introduction to the data representation and uh, various uh, number systems, then the number system conversions, and finally, we have seen uh, fixed point. Uh, representation and the floating point representation thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates